Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live here on TV3. My name is Pa Kwitiasari. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Osu Castle, one of Ghana's heritage, gradually losing its shine as portions rot. Also coming up, culverts and drains alongside road infrastructure in Kumasi and other parts of Ashanti region damaged by heavy rains. And elsewhere on the international front, Donald Trump becomes first sitting U.S. president to set foot in North Korea. We've got details of all these stories, plus many more coming up in the next 30 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook as well. President Akufuado has made a passionate appeal to African leaders to extend a blanket of protection for women of the continent and ensure that their rights are upheld and respected. He made the appeal when he addressed the Gender and Development Initiative for Africa presidential event at the British Council. According to the UN Refugee Agency, UNACR, women and girls make up around 50% of any refugee, internally displaced or stateless population. Africa is home to a third of the world's refugee population, with the highest proportion being female refugees, that is some 59%. The president, in his speech, made a four-point agenda he believes can transform the Africa and put her on a path to prosperity. We must prioritize establishing a peaceful atmosphere on the continent. The peoples of the African continent are young and vibrant. We must take advantage of their dynamism, youthful exuberance, to build the orderly and prosperous societies that promote peace. The event was dubbed the status of African female refugees and displaced persons and under the theme moving from surviving to thriving. In other news, culverts and drains alongside road infrastructure in Kumasi and other parts of the Shanti region have been damaged due to heavy rains. While the situation residents say exposes them to grave danger. Here's a report by my colleague Benjamin Edu. A major bridge on the Abripo Oshim Barikesi Road and another bridge at the nurses' quarters on Adwato Abripo Street have developed deep cracks exposing commuters to safety risk. The Abripo Kesi Street, which was recently asphalted, is in a poor state. A red flag and other objects are erected almost in the middle of the road to signal danger. But motorists appear determined to use it as heavy-duty vehicles continue to use the bridges. Road engineers say the continuous overflooding weakened the wind walls of the bridges and washed them away. Residents are appealing to the government to urgently fix the problem to avert any disaster. Regional Director of Highways Engineer Christian Nt assured residents and road users of measures to repair the bridges. Uh, Capacity-wise, uh, we've observed that uh, a lot of them are not able to contain or are able to accommodate the kind of runoff that we're experiencing now. Uh, we have already spoken to the con to contractors. Uh, some of those uh, areas that are not under con uh, contract, we are also arranging for some of our contractors working close by to come and fix those problems. Into the future, we may have to remove uh, the existing ones and place a bigger culverts to be able to accommodate the kind of runoff that we are experiencing. You're also watching Media Life here on TV3. In other news, government has procured 20,000 litter bins for distribution to all local assemblies in the 16 regions of Ghana to help fight and discriminate littering. While resourcing the assemblies to keep the environment clean, the Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Cecilia Abnadapa is also advocating communal labor and sport fines for persons caught littering indiscriminately. Here's a report by Beatrice Pilgabra. Indiscriminate dumping of refuse, littering and poor sanitary conditions have been the bane of metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies in promoting healthy environment. 
Most drains are filled with waste, while heaps of waste are left uncollected for days in some areas. Environmental sanitation, sensitization and campaigns are yet to yield the requisite results. Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Cecilia Abnadapa says government has invested 6 million cities to procure 20,000 litter bins in the fight against indiscriminate littering. She is taxed chief executives of local assemblies to enforce bylaws on sanitation and also introduce spot fines and communal labor for persons caught littering. We have garbage that are bulk. Those are taken out by the service providers. We have this little, little garbage that we throw around. That should stop. Hence the investment. These are the properties of the state, which means they are our properties. We should make sure we protect them, we maintain them and keep them well so that we we'll all have a clean and better environment. The minister handed over 1,000 litter bins to the Ashanti Regional Minister for Distribution to all 47 assemblies in the region. Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osei Mensah assured the bins would be placed at vantage points to end indiscriminate littering. The moment we come out with the virus sanctions, supporters don't come and see that uh, because MPP government is doing this, MPP government is doing that to punish people. No. But let's all give our support. When we see you drop, we give you the broom, you sweep. Simon Osemensa also emphasized communal labor as a means to enforce public discipline. Here's a big question we've all got to answer. Will tourists be disappointed with the state of tourist sites in the country as Ghana hosts Africans in the diaspora in this year of return? While well, the Osu Castle, one of the country's heritage, is gradually losing its shine as portions rot. Sarah Paco has more. Built by the Danes around 1659 and originally called the Christian Borg Castle, Osu Castle was the seat of government until 2013 when President Mahama moved his office to the Flagstaff House. It remains a tourist site for Ghanaians and foreigners with a master plan of making it a museum by the current government. As President Kufuadu has declared and formally launched the year of Return Ghana 2019, for Africans in the diaspora to mark 400 years of the first enslaved Africans arriving in Jamestown from Virginia, it is expected that the place will be in good shape to meet tourist expectation. However, a visit by the tourism minister Barbara Otting JC has revealed the place remains unkept at some sections. Pallets are falling off. Living room surfaces are unclean with broken electrical wares and tiles. Management of the facility blamed it on inadequate staff to operate the place. The sector minister is disappointed at the turn of events. Yeah, I noticed that um, in some way it was unkempt. And the issue um, they explained is because they don't have adequate staff to do the cleaning and all that. But I think even if you don't have adequate staff, staff you can schedule them in such a way that each part of of the facility um, receives some attention um, across the period so we'll also look at that if we can support them with some staff but it's going to get attention because the facility is going to be turned into a museum of leadership and governance and we have a um, significant partners who are coming on board to transform it so very soon is going to get a lot of attention she wants the site fixed before tourists troop for the year of return event expecting a lot of tourists coming into ghana and especially within this period between july and august when we celebrate um, panafest and emancipation day so it's important that we put the place in, in good shape so that when they come, they get a good experience. The minister also visited the Kwame Nkrumah Museum, as well as the Dubois Center, where she made some recommendations to management on how to receive tourists during this year of return. Reacting to reports about the poor state of the Asumje Park, the minister said the situation has been exaggerated. But just driving past, I looked at the lawn. The lawn didn't look that's unkempt because the impression i had from what i saw on social media 
oh, the whole place is so bushy. And so I was expecting um, grass about um, um, four or five feet tall growing there. But I didn't see that. But we'll um, go back and have a visit because I saw the entrance had been blocked. Now, the Three Foundation, in partnership with the MTN Ghana Foundation and the National Cardiothoracic Center, has donated an amount of 112,723 CDs to five beneficiaries to undergo open heart surgery at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Experts say one out of every 100 children born in Ghana might have gone through a hole in heart problem in one form or the other. Some may survive but quite a number of them die before their fifth birthday. The hole in heart disease, which can sometimes occur naturally, can also be acquired through infections and certain negative lifestyle during pregnancies. There is, however, a solution, but the problem is fund. It is in this light that Media Journal's Three Foundation and MTN Foundation have collaborated to ease the burden that parents go through when their children happen to be in such conditions. This donation is coming out of the proceeds that we got from the collaboration between uh, the three foundations, MTN Foundation and the National Cardiothoracic Center. It is going for five uh, whole in heart patients. They will get a corrective surgery. In fact, um, we got an, quite a number of requests and we felt, okay, these five are very urgent. We are looking forward to see these vulnerable children go through a successful corrective surgeries. Senior manager of MTN, Robert Kuzo, called on other philanthropist organizations and the general public to also come on board and help support the numerous children suffering from whole in heart diseases. Our contribution to this partnership is 200,000 Ghana cities. We hope that this amount of money will go a long way to brighten the lives of these young people that we are supporting. I would want to entreat other corporate institutions to also support this initiative. Head of the Cardiothoracic Center of Kolebu, Lawrence Srebo, gave assurance the surgery will be conducted as soon as possible. The money has been paid. Of course, there are a lot of other tests and uh, Blood also has to be donated and we schedule uh, the various patients as soon as possible. Some beneficiaries express gratitude to three foundations for heeding to the call for assistance. We thank the almighty Allah for their support and the patient that they've gotten for us. I am a woman who has three times. I am a woman who has three times. I am a woman who has three times. I am a woman who has Three Foundation and MTN Foundation are committed to enriching lives and empowering Ghanaians across the country with interventions in health, education and community development. We say you call to Three Foundation and the MTN Ghana Foundation. It's a watch and made it live here on TV3. We'll take a short break. Welcome back to Media Life here on TV3. Now, stakeholders in the extractive industry are calling for the establishment of a public interest and accountability committee. At the launch of the PIAC 2018 annual report in Kumasi, they argued the committee would help monitor revenue generation and utilization. The report is to inform Ghanaians on how the country's petroleum revenue was managed in 2018. It indicated that the country has raked close to $5 billion as revenue since it started production of oil in 2011. In 2018, an amount of $977 million was generated from the petroleum sector. 414 million Ghana cities was spent on free SHS out of the 827 million Ghana cities utilized from the annual budget funding account, ABFA. This, according to PIAC, suggests budget non-compliance on the part of Ministry of Finance. 
The committee wants Parliament to take steps to ensure that the minister complies with the budget as approved. Former Ashanti Regional Chairman of the National Peace Council, Professor Seth Okunye Siyama, commended Piak for policing management of the petroleum revenue. I think that we should ensure that our governments buy this idea of Piak and put it in the mining sector. Chairman of PIAC, Dr. Steve Mantiao, says the time has come for them to also please the mining revenue. This country is well endowed in mineral resources, particularly gold, and yet we have no citizens-led oversight arrangement for the gold sector. This for me is also worrying. What it means then is that you are policing and ensuring that all your revenues are put to good use, but you don't care if gold revenues are put to good use. Ghana currently has a total of close to half a billion dollars in the Heritage Fund. Piak wants government to focus more on the courage and participating interest when negotiating petroleum agreement since it gives the country more revenue. This is expected to forestall in any future further expenditure. Still on business, experts have emphasized the need for effective communication and stakeholder consultation if the Africa Free Trade Area Agreement is to be implemented successfully. Deputy Chairperson of the Africa Union Commission, Ambassador Kwesi Korte, says drawing information from the citizenry of the member state on the Africa Free Trade Area is key. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement would result in a unified market of over 1.2 billion people. Creating one African market is expected to prioritize goods and services invariably, leading to the creation of job opportunities. After the AFCFTA comes into force, there are likely to be a new round of discussions about creating institutions that foster dialogue, monitor compliance, and provide technical assistance. Deputy Chairperson of the Africa Union Commission, Ambassador Chrissy Quarty, says a successful implementation of the agreement will bring economic liberation to its member states. When intra-African trade increases by a factor of 2%, GDP rises by a factor of 10%. So there's really, really potential in this agreement. But to be able to, to trade, you must first produce. And to be able to produce and produce properly, you must apply science and technology in production. And that is why it's important to have a young brothers and sisters to recognize the importance of education, the importance of all inclusive education. He was speaking at an event to outdoor the 25th celebration of Stratcom Africa. CEO of Stratcom Africa, Esther Koba, underscored the relevance of an effective two way communication to national growth. We have no doubt about the importance of communication for the future of our country and indeed the African continent for the well-being of the African people. Communication is required within and among African nations to enable us on this continent to pool our capabilities and resources together for our own benefit. Since its establishment 25 years ago, Stratcom Africa has earned a reputation in total communications and reputation management that uses communication to enhance organizational performance. Now, the new Termaport Terminal 3 is to leave the transshipment trade in West and Central Africa. Director General of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Michael Luguje, described the terminal as a great engineering masterpiece, insisting its position to take over the business in the sub region. The construction team is handing over to the transition and operational teams for work to start. The $1.5 billion port is expected to receive the first vessel to discharge its first cargo consignment. The new port will run 24 hours and 7 days, which is expected to last for 100 years and owned by MPS for 35 years. A situation that will help improve the turnaround time at the port and make it more competitive. 
Three berthing facilities capable of holding two million equivalent units of cargo is also ready. More modern intrusive examination of cargo and scanning of imports and exports are now available. We are ready and motivated to deliver as per all expectations to be able to serve Mother Ghana and serve their community, their shipping lines, and all our stakeholders. Aside that, 60 contractors and suppliers have been engaged with 1,900 new jobs would be created. It is expected that increased productivity, reduced freight costs, and a boost to the country's GDP are some major economic benefits. We have given ourselves a good test with this vessel and more ready for the big day, which is the 28th of June. There will be another vessel coming very soon, I hope, and that one we will call it the go or no go vessel, and most likely it will be a go. However, all these had faced stiffer agitations from port workers for weeks until the president intervened. Maritime experts anticipate that government should review or remove clauses that gives NPS exclusivity rights to handle containerized cargo because the port is the single largest revenue generator for the country. The Watch and Media Live here on TV3. You're welcome back to Media Live here on TV3. Let's do some international news now. And Donald Trump has become the first sitting U.S. president to set foot in North Korea after meeting Kim Jong-un in the area between the two Koreas. After posing for handshakes, Trump met the North Korean leader for over an hour in the heavily fortified, demilitarized zone. The two men agreed to set up teams to resume stalled nuclear talks. The last summit broke down in February with no progress on denuclearization in North Korea. Well, in their third face-to-face -face encounter in just about a year, the two leaders met at the tense area that has divided the peninsula since hostilities in the Korea War ended in 1953. Numerous previous U.S. presidents have visited the Amist Amistice Line, largely in a show of U.S. support for the South. But Trump changed the optics of the visit as showing uh, binoculars and a bomber jacket for a business suit. Now, speaking alongside Mr. Trump in a rare statement to the press, Mr. Kim said this was a symbol of their excellent relationship. Elsewhere, a senior World Health Organization official has warned that efforts to contain the spread of the deadly Ebola virus in the Democratic Republic of Congo will remain elusive unless the vicious cycle of violence in the region is broken. Latest WHO figures put the number of Ebola cases at 2,284, including 1,540 deaths and 637 survivors. WHO Assistant Director General for Emergency Response Ibrahima Sose Foley says there's been good progress in scaling up operations to contain the spread of the deadly Ebola virus. Elsewhere, thousands of protesters flooded the streets of Madrid on Saturday to oppose the newly elected conservative mayor's decision to reverse car pollution restrictions. Well, that's how we conclude Media Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Park Chris Yassari.